What's up guys, Cody with KAK Industry and I've got something a little bit different for you guys today. Something you're probably not used to seeing too often. Some of you guys out there know exactly what this is. Others have maybe uh, seen it and kind of have an idea. Anyways, this is a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Yes, you can own this. Um, it's registered under the NFA, unfortunately. Uh, it's the same process as owning a can, Form 4. Um, some states, uh, it's just, so it's technically a destructive device. Uh, some states allow that, some states do not. We are in the free state of Missouri, so we can get cool little fancy toys uh, like this LMT grenade, grenade launcher right here. So. Uh, of course, obviously we can't have the real deal. This is what uh, most people will know as just a standard chuck round or a practice round. So basically, these are used in training. Um, it's basically just, you know, qualifying round or just for uh, <clears throat> people to get practice on before they move on to the real deal. Um, basically, when this is launched, it's got the same kind of recoil, same distance that it'll move as, a, uh, as the real deal, except for when it impacts the uh, top here, which is kind of like a, uh, you know, thin plastic shell, um, breaks apart and a bunch of powder goes everywhere. So what most guys are going to be used to seeing, uh, if you own one of these or if you know somebody who has one of these or if you've shot one, is, what's more than likely is you've used one of these inert practice chalk rounds. Uh, they can be purchased. Um, they are indeed inert, meaning you need to find a way to pro propel this projectile, which I will uh, expand on in just a moment here. Um, it's surprisingly easy to do. Um, even if you like don't have any experience reloading ammunition, uh, this is kind of a pump and dump like you know there's no like exacting measurements or anything like that you know compared to like um, hand loading for precision rifle or something like that very, very simple endeavor to uh, you know basically enable yourself to have um, projectiles that you can that will actually, actually function, function um, if you have one of these devices all right, so to get rocking and rolling, um, there's a few things that you'll need uh, to do so. So you're gonna need a projectile. So we've got those. You're gonna need a pusher or you're gonna need, gonna need a 3D, uh, 3D printed uh, windscreen. Uh, this is kind of like a pusher and windscreen kind of all in one kind of deal if, you're, if you decide to 3D print these. The nice thing about 3D printing uh, you can kind of do, um, you know, different things with them. You can put, um, you can make this cavity hollow. You can put something like a gun litter in there um, and maybe put a, uh, some kind of cap or, I don't know, or something, I don't know. Maybe that sounds cool. Maybe not though. Um, so aside from, and, and just to note, if you, are, if you do want to go the 3D printing route, um, just know that your uh, blank charge, so the, uh, the blank that you're going to end up loading up, you're going to want to reduce that load just because this is going to be taking the, the brunt of that, uh, of that pressure in order to get this out the tube and move it down range. Interesting, interestingly enough, this is rifled. It's very aggressive, um, and it works exact the exact same way as a uh, as a normal you know gun would or you know a rifle or pistol or you know what have you anything that's modern uh, has rifling like that and this works the same way yeah it's a uh, a little bit bigger than what most people are you know traditionally used to um, but hey it works the first time I ever I guess I've seen these used before uh, the first time I had hands-on one hands-on with one I was with the owner uh, Kurt and we were out at the range we were filming something else and he's like here check out what I'm check out what I'm working on um, 
some 40 mil stuff. I know I knew that he'd be t had, knew that he had been tinkering around with some stuff. I wasn't exactly sure what, and uh, he's got a range that goes out goes on for you know, until forever. And he said, "You see that uh, silhouette target down there at 200 yards?" I said, "Yep." He's said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna hit it from here." And I'm thinking like, "Okay, like he'll probably hit, you know, within maybe." 20 yards of it or you know somewhere in the vicinity of 20 yards and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll roll in either a uh, picture in picture or the link in the description for the video because you get you get my reaction from it so he loads around um, aims at a 12 by 20 steel target so at 200 yards you know it's it's not a huge target or anything especially when you're using um, uh, grenade sites which are, aren't you know you know made to be extremely accurate or anything and he leans on the hood of a truck fires one off and 200 yards I'm, I'm filming the whole thing and I'm like thinking like oh yeah that's cool and like a couple seconds later you hear a clank you, you know, oh my god target <laughs> game sound. I'm like holy shit. 200 yards he nails this thing on his first try so uh yeah he put in a lot of work into you know he he did his research on on this to let's just put it that way so um everything that um you know has been designed with all these that we're producing it's everything that's important has been addressed um and and then some so to get on with what all you're going to need for this um 38 smith and wesson uh brass um this is just you can buy it in like bags of 100 this is ppu 38 smith brass um pistol primers so due to the nature of how these uh, grenade launchers are designed uh they like I guess what people, well, it's, e it's easiest to describe it as a, uh, a, a soft primer or softer primer. You actually see this is the primer cup. The, you know, the whole external part of it is actually made out of copper. Well, copper is a lot softer um, than what, you know, most of us are used to with using, um, you know, traditional uh, primers for pistol and rifle. Um, the Federal we found are about the softest that you can get. Nothing special, uh, Federal small pistol primers. Um, so aside from the brass, um, I just showed you, small pistol primer, Federal, seems to uh, work the best. Uh, some you might encounter a uh, failure to fire, so you'll get a click and nothing happens, that's fine. Just Cock, you know, recock the mechanism, fire on that second time. I've we've never had one not go off on the second time. That's mostly, you know, just a, a hard primer issue. There's really nothing else that can be attributed to that. Um, as far and as far as we know, there's no way to source these copper primers um, as individual components. You can so buy. aside from that, you're going to need these, which these can be sourced for relatively uh, inexpensive amount amount of money uh you can go online you can find them anywhere you can order order these just to your door um so brass primer plastic casing the plastic casing will hold your blank cartridge projectile or windscreen slash windscreen um this is what's moving through the air um it's the correct terminology for it is a windscreen um so a 3d printed route that's kind of a all-in-one and we have a file for this what this enables you to do is load your own blanks this this is basically a crimp die and it also has a seating stem in here that's spring-loaded that will push your gas check into place so when you're loading let's pretend this has a primer in it we drop our charge in there in order to secure that powder in there we put a gas check on top here and we run it through the die. That little spring 
uh, guide rod mechanism I just showed you that seats and compresses the charge in the casing. And while this is, when the ram is all the way up and um, the, you know, the casing is all the way into that die, it'll actually crimp the top of the brass just like that. So all the way around, that's doing a, a full crimp. So the gas check is secured in place there. It's not going anywhere. The pistol powder is beneath that. Um, and I can go ahead and show you exactly how it's done and how easy it is. This is all you're gonna do to set the die up. So raise your ram all the way up at the uh, top of the shell plate there. Keep, take a look at it. All right, it's contacting it. I'm just gonna give it a little test there. All right, I'm getting a firm contact. That's exactly what I want. And tighten down the lock ring nice and tight. Just confirm that we're making firm contact. That's all you need to do. There's no messing around. There's no fine tuning. Nothing like that, it's, it's extremely simple. Pistol primers. Primers are just a sub flush there. You can kind of see it. All right. What we found to work best um, with these plastic casings um, as long as you're using the zinc pusher and a, a windscreen of some sort uh, 7.5 grains of bullseye so um, we've you know kind of went to the point of ironing out um, low uh, charges and everything um, in correspondence with um, sighting systems for these grenade launchers here. Found that uh, 7.5 grains of bullseye is in tune um, the best with these kind of sighting systems with these grenade launchers here. Got our first charge, and I'll kind of uh, zip through these as quickly as I can here. So as you can see here, 7.5 grains of bullseye in these uh, 38 Smith cases make it pretty well up to the top. Uh, just remember that you're gonna be compressing these. With the uh, copper gas check. Uh, we found if you're going to be using a, uh, th you know, 3D uh, pusher uh, windscreen combination, uh, you're going to need to dial this load back a little bit as you're going to start uh, getting at very least deformations um, on the bottom of the 3D printed material uh, just because of overpressure. The, uh, the filament just can't handle what uh, you know a piece of zinc can handle. Um, we do five grains of bullseye, and that seems to do uh, pretty well with rounds that are with these 3D printed uh, units here. All right, we will load up five for right now. All righty, so I have my five primed pieces 
of 38 Smith & Wesson brass here. And I've also dropped charges in uh, all five of these. <clears throat> so what we're going to use to, you know, keep the, keep the powder in place, uh, you know, secure it, make sure it's not going anywhere. We're just going to use um, 35 cal, or I guess they're slightly undersized, 348 cal uh, gas checks. So just going to confirm my firm contact here. Still got it? Okay. So primed case with powder goes in. And you'll see how this, uh, um, you'll see how this um, return spring um, mechanism works. You're going to press the gas check in with this lip facing up. So this lip this pin in this die is going to press down on this. You want this lip to be up, so it's just going to sit perfectly on top. You can kind of click it into place. It might even fall in a little bit. That's just fine. If it's at a little bit of an angle, don't worry about it. Um, the pin in here, and you can see it pushing up here. So this pin is going to go up. It's going to stop. The ram is bottomed out. Remove it. And just like that, uh, primed, charged, gas check is in place. We've got a nice crimp around the uh, case mouth here. And this gas check is secured into place. Um, with this nice crimp around here with the uh, KK uh, 40 mil blank die. So without getting too off into the weeds, uh, just I guess say uh, obviously do your own research on loading these things. Um, it's perfectly le legal to possess, perfectly legal to do what you're seeing in this video right now. What gets um, kind of an eyebrow raised, um, you know, per certain agencies, you are not allowed to have this, you know, capable propellant inserted into this and let's say store it at your house. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't do. You can, you can make up your mind for yourself. Um, but just so I'm covering this, you are technically not supposed to put this accelerant or projectile or, or whatever you want to call it into this until you are at the range and ready to fire. Once you're out of your vehicle, that's a big thing with how it is with DOT specifies that these should not be transported if this is installed into this, which, okay, whatever. So they can be stored side by side and, well, you know, you, you know how it is with these uh, three letter agencies. Um, so yeah, it's as simple as that. So um, if I were to get to my place of um, where I was gonna shoot this, and this is perfectly legal to have um, an expelled or expired, um, blank in here this has already been shot it's empty there's nothing in there um so let's just pretend that i just loaded a live one in here which it's not and i'm gonna shoot a you know 3d round there's different so this technically all right is now ready to fire um, there may be other things you want to do to get some extra weight in here, or you might want to put some um, can, can confetti in here to make a, a cool rainbow or something. Um, if you want to go more towards the traditional route, we'll have our zinc pushers. And these, these do have quite a bit of weight. I bet if I put this on my powder scale here that it wouldn't even, it would be too heavy to register. So this 
um, these zinc pushers along with these driving bands. So this band here, if you can see on the outer edge here, it's actually a pretty thick band um, that goes, that interfaces with uh, the rifling in these tubes. Um, you know, that spins it just like a bullet. It stabilizes it just like a uh, normal rifle or pistol bullet. Um, if you want to have something that's really accurate um, and that's, you know, something that you're just, um, that you want to like reach out and hit targets at uh, 200 yards like uh, some dude I know is somehow able to do on the first try, uh, you might want to go and look into, you know, the more um, traditional setup. So zinc pusher, plastic casing, or aluminum um, ones that we will have. Windscreen, that would be good to go uh, just like that. Um, we like to fill these up with, <coughs> and you can fill them up as much or as little as you want. We like to put uh, snap line powder in there. It's like a chalk powder. Load up the rest of these real quick. I guess I'm going to finish off the rest of these real quick. So I've got four more, one there, three more in the tray. Copper gas check. The lip facing up, smooth side. That's concentric facing down. Just going to place that right on top. You'll kind of feel it, you know, just snap into place just a little bit. And I can show you what that looks like. So that's just barely sitting right on top of the case mount there. Uh, so when I'm bringing this up, the first thing that's getting contacted is that gas check. And you'll see this spring-loaded pin right here start to lift. So right about now, this pin is pushing that gas check into place, kind of compressing uh, the powder, it's getting the, uh, there you see it snap down, that means it's done. And then the, the rest of that push, the rest of that kind of tension there is just the crimp happening. And there you go. Another one. Perfectly done. Um, one little piece of information I will tell you, if, if you're loading these light, if you're shooting the, uh, 3D printed projectiles, that's something you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use a reduced load uh, just because obviously these are way less weight compared to using one of these zinc pushers. You can't, I mean, I guess you could fill this up with something to try to match the weight, but you're not going to be able to get all that weight um, in the exact space um, at the bottom compared to as if you're using an actual a weighted zinc pusher here. Um, so if you are downloading, if you're using a, a charge that's less, we usually go with about five grains of bullseye, um, you're still going to want to compress that. And with that five grains, if you just um, are loading a, a piece of brass in here uh, with the five grains of powder, you're going to get a loose fit. So the powder needs to be compressed. So what we do is you can put a fine like I use um, tumbling media, really fine um, corn cob. It's basically like dust. Um, I just take a little spoon, this little teaspoon like this. Um, and I just have a little thing of the powder like this. And it's, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just kind of topping it off. So there's, you know, more than a dusting. You're just adding a little bit more, um, material that's going to give you the, the you know the nice compressed load that we're looking for with this um, if you're if you're not getting compression on the load um, in your case if you're not getting compression uh, your gas checks not going to stay in place and that crimp is not going to hold um, that gas check where it needs to be it needs to be compressed um, that's the only way to keep things consistent that's the only way to keep the powder in place that's how this die is designed it's to seat that gas check firmly against the powder all right just a little bit better uh kind of bird's eye view for you put the powder in there 
shell in the shell holder. Gas check with the lip facing up. Straighten that out a little bit. Um, you don't have to square it in there or anything. Um, you can, it will kind of click into place. I kind of like doing that, it's not really necessary. The uh, pin, which you'll see raise, uh, raising up right there, that'll push that gas check into place exactly where it needs to be. Sometimes you'll hear that uh, snap and you'll see the uh, return spring um, kind of jump up and down. That's okay, that's what's supposed to happen. All right, perfect crimp around there. Gas check is pressed into place. This isn't uh, this isn't going anywhere. That's exactly where it needs to be. Sometimes you will see a little bit of uh, brass shavings from where the uh, crimp is being, where the crimp is taking place. That's all right. You're getting excellent contact. Don't worry about it. Do these last couple for you. Yeah, if you, if you press it in just a little bit, you'll kind of feel it a little, a little click into place. All right, another one. 38 Smith & Wesson. Three, 3.348 gas check in there. Federal soft, uh, small pistol primer in there. This is the uh, the best recipe that we found to work so far. Got one more for you. Okay. And like I said before, you don't need to like seat that gas check in there. You can kind of see this one's a little tilted, but. Once I run it up into the die, does uh, exactly what it needs to do.